setup wise and all the routine you've been doing there is really good. The two lines we've got here now on either side of your little design sort of create like sort of that barrel image, okay? Yeah. The first one we can see now was a pretty good back swing. We're sort of, oh, okay. we're rotating around ourselves nicely as we are doing as we are doing on that one, okay? So we're nicely over the ball there, no lateral sway. However, this one now from the top half, the top half now is moving a long way left, coming down quite easy ahead, almost like out of the box already now, yeah. driving that golf club into the top of the ball and driving it low. And you can see when you're finishing that swing, miles away, you've lent massively through there. Now the lines maybe move a little bit, this is the camera, but you can see now much more of a rotation. Head does sit on a little bit longer, but at least when we finish, we're kind of in a more balanced position there, much more vertical, okay? We get rid of them, we're looking, that now needs to be as vertical and straight as we can, and he has moved up onto his foot, where this one's almost trying to hang back just to stop you falling over. Yeah. As a result, because you can't do that, it has to then come through, and you end up falling forward as you did. So that shot, yes, you could argue, potentially Probably gives you more okay. power, but it's gonna be five yards more power to risk doffing it 15 yards on the ground or hoiking it left or right. So. For me, it's about trying to get a consistent strike, knowing that your 7 iron is going to go <clears throat> the same distance every time. If you then suddenly step into one, it goes 15 yards further or 10 yards further or whatever it might well, do. Good, you're on the third at Brunel going to that green. You're, in the back, you're over the back, you're in down with the fourth tee and beyond and probably a lost ball. So it's about getting a consistent strike, knowing how far each, each club's going to go and hitting the golf ball consistently that distance and the same sort of direction. There's lateral movement side to side. So from here now, if your head is sort of starting here and it sways back there and it lunges through. There's so many variables are going on there you've got to try and compensate with. Mm. You get it right, you hit some lovely shots, but it's going to be no, too, too risky. Yeah, and that's, that's on a flat line. Yeah. You imagine on a downhill line on the first into Brynhill when you've got the, the slope of the fairway down there somewhere and your top half swaying that far, you'll be running after the ball before you hit it sort of thing. So trying to get yourself in a, in a more sort of centered manner so you're sort of swinging around that barrel as we said. So it's more of a rotational move. Yes, there's going to be weight shift. That's obvious. Okay, as your body turns back now, you can see now at this position, I would say on the right hand side, your weight is sort of inside the right heel there. So in a good position, okay. And as we unwind the body now, there's going to be a little bit of weight shift to the left side, but it's not rocking back and forth overly. Because it's twisting. Exactly. Exactly. It's got to be a rotate. If your body can rotate more effectively, you can return that golf club back to the ball more consistently. And that's what we're looking for is a consistent strike. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just be careful that if we start hitting the ground or hitting the odd shot left or right, we don't adjust on the next shot. Okay? Right. If it's a bad shot, so be it. Go back to going through your routine, focusing on that rotation, getting the best strike you possibly can. Okay, mate? Makes sense? Right. Yeah. Good man.